This is an extremely complex subject, but for the purposes of our discussion, it really doesn't have to be. So I've done my absolute best to try and make it as easy to understand as possible. Whether you're trying to improve your health, still trying to get a diagnosis, or recently diagnosed and don't know where to begin, my hope is that this video will help you to understand what is happening in your body and what to do about it so you can start your path of healing. It is important to understand that everything in life revolves around cycles. From the creation of life, you know it as the golden ratio, or God's fingerprint, or the Fibonacci sequence, all the way to your health. Your health and processes in the body also revolve around cycle after cycle as well. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about a particular cycle that I feel is the most important one that has the biggest impact on your immune system and directly impacts your health and genetic expression. So let's take a look at it. Histamine is a signaling molecule in the gut, the skin, the immune system, and is also a neurotransmitter. It's notorious for triggering immune responses and inflammation. When histamine goes unchecked and unregulated for long periods of time, the acute inflammation starts turning into long-term chronic inflammation. And for some folks, it may not even be noticeable. It could present itself as stubborn weight you can't seem to lose, like you hit a plateau. We have all heard how chronic inflammation does considerable harm to the body, but it has a tremendous impact to the health of our cells, which brings us to the next part of our cycle, the mitochondria. Each one of your cells has mitochondria in them, and the mitochondria are the powerhouse of your cells that creates energy. They're like the little batteries of your body. Each one of those mitochondria carries about 1.4 volts of energy, and they all contain DNA in them. Your cells need DNA to function, and DNA needs the cells and their enzymes to repair themselves. If the inflammation damages those mitochondria and the DNA within, those little batteries start to lose its ability to produce energy. This will also create more inflammation. If there is no hope of repair or survival for the cell, it'll start a process of apoptosis, which is cell death, or the damaged cell will keep dividing, which can lead to cancer. Once there's enough damage to the cells and the mitochondria, your body will start trying to prioritize itself, and it does that by making metabolic changes. Each and every one of us naturally does this already. When faced with danger or stressful life events, we all either try to avoid that danger by running away or we get ready to fight it in order to protect ourselves. Well, our body does the exact same thing. When your body reaches the point where it needs to preserve itself, it starts to release a stress hormone called cortisol and it enters into fight or flight mode. When it's in fight or flight, the stress hormones completely shut down the immune system and instead of healing, your body is using all the energy it has to preserve you and pushes the blood to the arms and legs for either fight or flight. Think of it this way, if you have a bacterial infection, but you're standing in the face of danger, would you rather have your body using up all its energy in order to heal you? Or would you rather have all the available energy right now in order to run away? Your body can't do both. So you've effectively shut down your immune system until you reach a point of peace and safety before your body will restart its healing mode. However, with enough damage to the body, it can get stuck in fight or flight until you've addressed the damage and started healing it. Like we discussed earlier, when there's enough damage to the cells and mitochondria, your body is trying to prioritize itself and it does that by making metabolic changes. The biggest metabolic change your body makes is in its methylation cycles. Methylation is an energy dependent reaction that is absolutely necessary for regulating gene expression, which is your DNA. It regulates protein function and RNA processing, which is in your mitochondria, detoxifying the liver and the body, such as heavy metals, hormone metabolism, neurotransmitter synthesis and elimination, energy production pathways, and immune function. Methylation has many cycles within itself and is a feedback loop. So if methylation changes begin to take place, it can significantly affect your health and the whole cycle of illness will start to repeat itself. This cycle needs a catalyst to get started and it could be any of the following items and plenty more. 
But even if you have been healthy, do everything right, like getting plenty of rest, exercise, and a healthy diet, and are free of any genetic mutations, there's one thing that can single-handedly kick off this entire cycle, and that item is stress. Stress is one of the biggest instigators in starting this cycle. Now, based on this cycle, you can see the items swirling around DNA and the immune system. These items directly impact your health and immune system, and the environment your cells live in determine your genetic expression. You are not a slave to your genetics. They are affected by the cycle. Sure, you may get certain hereditary traits like your dad's nose or your mom's booty, but the rest is up to you. Like I said earlier, the environment your cells live in determines your genetic expression. Remember earlier how I said sometimes we get bogged down by all the tiny details in medicine or science with trying to figure out how to heal? All those tiny details wind up falling back into one of these categories in the cycle of illness in one way or another, either directly or indirectly. But there's one more element to this cycle we haven't discussed yet. For decades, scientists and medical researchers have been looking for that smoking gun that controls your immune system. Now we've shown you the entire cycle of illness, but there's one more element that plays a part in all of this. Scientists and medical researchers were looking for a particular cell that could control the immune system. They started to investigate and thought it could be the eosinophils, the basophils, the neutrophils. They continued to go through just about every single immune cell, only to find out that there were more mechanisms at play than what one particular cell was capable of doing. In 1878, Paul Ehrlich, a 24-year-old German medical student, discovered a particular cell, the mast cell, calling them Mottzellen. He even went on to win the Nobel Prize in 1908 for his discovery. The mast cell resides directly in the immune system. They release histamine and other chemicals which signal other immune and neuroimmune cells. They help fight infection and promote healing. Because mast cell activation is notorious for releasing histamine and triggering more mast cells to the injury, infection, or healing site, which in turn triggers even more histamine, this single cell helps contribute to your overall histamine load in the cycle of illness. Mast cells are the master switch to the immune system that the scientists have been looking for all this time. But I don't want you to just take my word for it. I knew that if I had come to this conclusion, someone else had to have as well. So I went looking for it. It took me some time, but I did find it. Now this is peer-reviewed science, so you don't have to just take my word for it. Here's additional scientific proof. The titles of these books, journals, and articles say a thousand words. So it's not just me saying this. Now, if mast cells are the master switch to your immune system, and mast cells release histamine, there is your direct link to the histamine issue in the cycle of illness other than food or allergen. And we all know that the cycle continues. For years, I have been seeing parallels and forming different hypotheses. I have had conversations with all kinds of patients with different diagnoses. Things they would say or symptoms they had always stuck out in my mind like an elaborate puzzle because so many of the symptoms were common amongst the different illnesses, especially mast cell disorders, and I wanted to know the why and the how. So the wheels were constantly grinding away in my head trying to figure out how this all worked, how so many of the same symptoms were possible, and how it all came together to cause the specific diagnosis. After making some of the realizations from my research and experiments, I knew I had to find a way to try and prove my ultimate theory, so I decided to try a very simple and basic experiment. I sat down and started randomly listing any autoimmune condition and chronic illness that I could think of off the top of my head, along with some of the symptoms we regularly face whether we have a diagnosis or not. Then I went to work to see if each one of these items fit into the cycle of illness. I did this over and over with different symptoms, conditions, etc. And in each case, I was able to find the links to all of the items in the cycle of illness. Now, there are a few diagnoses that I didn't show the links to each of the items in the cycle of illness because I didn't have the definitive scientific proof. But had I dug deeper, 
I'm positive I would have found every detail. Symptoms have relationships to all areas of this cycle. This cycle can be the reason behind the symptom or the mechanism causing the symptom can cause another item in this cycle of illness to go wrong. With that being said, this doesn't necessarily mean you have all the items in this cycle of illness, but it can be an indicator of one or more of these items going wrong. There are varying degrees of progression when it comes to the symptoms and it can be difficult at times to decipher what came first, the chicken or the egg. However, if you've progressed to a full-blown autoimmune condition, you can be assured that all four categories have now impacted your immune system and DNA expression and your health has suffered as a result. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the cycle behind all illness. It doesn't matter what it is. All those teeny tiny details we get bogged down with all fit into one of the items in this cycle. And the good news is we can fix it and we can fix it naturally. But in order to break this cycle, you have to address all the items simultaneously. If you try to fix one, but not the others, it'll help a little bit, but it won't fix the overall problem. And I'm going to show you how to do it. We'll be diving into each and every section in great detail to teach you how it works, what affects it, and how to fix it. Our body is a complex machine with its own electrical system and elaborate chemistry set. You've all heard the saying, for every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. Well, in biochemistry, those reactions can either be beneficial or toxic to our health. In hacking our biochemistry, we're balancing our excesses and our deficiencies. We take out what we have too much of and feed it what we're lacking in order to return it to homeostasis. But addressing the cycle is only part of the equation. In order to completely heal, we need to address not only the body, but also our minds, bodies, and souls. I have so much to share and show you. There's no way I can possibly fit it all in one video. And believe me, I've tried. Stick with me and I'll show you how to break this cycle using science, chemistry, physics, and quantum mechanics. Yes, even quantum mechanics. I have many videos along with scientists and physicists and experts in store for you so you can get some of the information straight from the experts. I got a lot of geek in me and I'm going to let my geek flag fly to show you how to do all of this. And you can heal. I wouldn't be here today if it couldn't be done. Stay tuned for more videos where I will be doing a deep dive into each and every section, walking you through step by step on how to heal it and improve your quality of life. Thank you all for your support and patience while I was working to figure this all out, all while trying to heal myself as well.